What a mighty, mighty God we serve. He reigns from above with peace, joy, and love. This is the Faith Temple Broadcasting Network once again. I'm your host, Dr. Horace Strand, and we're so thankful that the Lord has granted us this privilege to come before you. Amen. Praise God with his holy word. This is the first Sunday in May, and it just happens to be May the 1st as well. And uh, we're so thankful to the Lord. Hallelujah. That he has brought us this far by faith. We want to invite you to, amen, tell somebody that the Faith Temple Broadcasting Network is on the air and that they can go to faithvn.org or faiththc.org and log in and follow us. Amen. They can also go anytime during the day, 24 hours a day, to look at some of our library programs that will be a blessing to you in your walk with the Lord. We have some musical programs as well as some public affair programs. And I'm sure that, amen, there's something in there that will be an inspirational encouragement to you. Please write us at P.O. Box 206, Chester, PA, 19016, with your prayer requests and also with any questions you might have concerning the Word of God or anything you hear on this network. We'll be so glad to hear from you and we'll respond to you. Amen is unto the Lord. We do have a man, a young person that's going to be sharing with us this morning from God's Word. And uh, we want you to prepare yourself to hear what God is doing in her life and what God is saying through her to us because no matter who you are, when you're called of God, it's not your word, it's God's word. And the primary objective is to give to others what God has given to you to give to them. And when you've done that, we call it delivering our souls as ministers, amen? We deliver our souls. And I'm thankful for this young lady who's who's growing up in the Lord and one day, praise God, is going to take an even greater leadership role in this church. Amen. None other than minister and training Sister Dietrich Connors. She's going to come and bring you the word of God. Amen. And let amen you know what God is saying through her to us this morning. Let's receive her by saying God bless. Amen, amen Sister Connors. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Today I will be coming before you from Psalms 119, verse 105. And the word of the Lord says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come before your people in your presence, Lord. Help me to decrease in self that I may increase in you and minister the word to these, your children. We bind Satan all he seeks to do to hinder scourge. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Today, I would like to admonish you to keep your lamp lit. Blowing out your light produces separation from God. In school, I came across this scripture, Psalms 119, as a result of a punishment for making bad choices. We used to have to write this text over the weekend and um, in its entirety, and it's a very long psalm, but little did I know I was being filled up with power pellets as unto the Lord, that the memories that I had from writing this would stay with me for the rest of my life. Praise Today I will be using Ezekiel, the prophet and the watchman to show you why it is important to keep your lamp lit and examining seven of the visions that God revealed to Ezekiel throughout his journey, a watchman and prophet. Yes. From a boy, Ezekiel was trained to be a priest in Judah. However, once Judah was invaded by King Nebuchadnezzar, he was unable to continue his studies. 
But even in the midst of captivity, God kept him while he kept his lamp lit. Because God is a just God and a loving God, and he always keeps watch over his children, just like he watches over us. During this time, God spoke to Ezekiel in verse 3, uh, 17 through 9, chapter 3, 17 through 19. God said, I have made you a watchman over the house of Israel. Why did God do this? God chose Ezekiel because he kept his lamp lit in the midst of the storm. God honored his faithfulness yeah. the same way God honors our faithfulness as unto him. That's right. In Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 6 through 10, the word of God tells us, Therefore thus switch the Lord God, because he set thine heart as the heart of God. So Ezekiel had a heart after God. The same way when we accept Christ into our heart, we have a heart after God. This indicates that Ezekiel had a nurturing spirit, a loving spirit, and a great concern for the well-being of the children of Israel, just like God. Amen. God later reveals in this chapter that because of Ezekiel's faithfulness to him, he would use Ezekiel to help bring about the restoration of the children of Israel. Because of this, and Ezekiel's lamp continuing to stay lit, God was able to speak to him through prophecies, also through words, parables, visions, and similitudes, which are strange things that point to something greater. A good example of this would be the old Negro spiritual, Ezekiel saw the wheel, I think we all are very familiar with. To see a wheel of stars in the sky is a rare and strange occurrence. However, this occurrence symbolized the message of hope for those fleeing slavery along the Underground Railroad. Praise God that our hope in God is a sure foundation and the reason why we as believers keep our lamps lit. In the book of Ezekiel, God showcases his love for his children, especially in chapter 16. Even though the repeated practice of idolatry and witchcraft, as well as disrespecting the Sabbath day, was done frequently by the children of Israel. Yes, this was a tremendous grievance, and it saddened God greatly. Despite this, God used Ezekiel, like so many others, tried to, get, to try to get their attention and to inspire them to change from their wicked ways. Amen. And just like when we get off a track for what God has called for us to do, he will use his word, the Holy Spirit, and others to try to get us back on track. Amen. If our land is out, we can't respond to what God is saying to us. We can't hear his voice. If we're not studying to show ourselves approved by doing daily devotions, spending quality time in prayer with the Lord, reading our Bible, attending Bible studies, and coming into the house of God so that we can receive the message from the teacher and have sound teaching and a sound foundation of a clear understanding of God's word, then we're unable to keep our lamps lit. Satan can continually tempt us and distract us from our journey with the Lord. So saints, keep your lamps lit. In Ezekiel chapter 33, mm -hmm. the second vision speaks of the fall of Jerusalem. Since the children of Israel had continued to not take heed to the word of the Lord, and during this time, Daniel and Ezekiel were working together to try to change them from their wicked ways. They were trying to turn them from idolatry and witchcraft and breaking the Sabbath day. But their disobedience continued, and it resulted in three evasions which led to the imprisonment of Ezekiel, Daniel, as well as the children of Israel. And also during this time, Ezekiel suffered a difficult tragedy. He lost the life of his wife, but God had forewarned him and prepared him that this was going to happen. But even in the midst of this, Ezekiel kept his light lit. Hallelujah. We must obey God so that we can grow and reach our fullest potential 
in the Lord. Our light will not remain lit if we walk in disobedience to God's word, and this will displease our father. A good father will also discipline his children lovingly if they continue to disobey, just like the children of Israel. If we are wise, we will readily accept godly correction and grow from it and use our testimony to encourage and inspire others who may go through similar challenges in their life. The third vision that God spoke through Ezekiel with was Edom's doom. The people of Edom were the descendants from Esau who actively indulged in the lust of the flesh and walked in pride and arrogance. God reiterated that pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit comes before a fall. But yet they still did not take heed. As believers, we must walk in humility and not seek to indulge in fulfilling the lust of the flesh. We do such with grievance as unto the Lord when we engage in those things. And we are only setting ourselves up for failure and diminishing the light of our lamps. And if our lights of our lamps are no longer shining bright for God, we cannot be used for his glory. So saints, keep your lamp lit by being teachable and trainable. We as believers are lifelong learners in the kingdom of God. We must always be trainable and teachable. Ezekiel lost his wife, but he still kept his lamp lit. That should be our same testimony. Whatever God takes from us or we lose along our journey, we still should be able to give him glory and be an encouragement and minister to others of the glory of God. Also, in the fifth vision, which was found in Ezekiel chapter 36 through 37, it talked about the Valley of the Dry Bones. And most of us are familiar with this because there are songs about them this uh, passage and we learn it as little kids in Sunday school. But this is a similitude because we know that bones don't rise again, only in fictional scary movies or cartoons. However, these bones symbolize that the resurrection that God would give to the children of Israel and the fragments of what was left of Israel would be restored fully once they humbly submitted and committed to the will of God. We as believers are afforded the same privilege. Even if we fail to keep our light lit, God is no respecter of person. If we repent with a sincere and contrite spirit, God will show up mildly on our behalf because he's a faithful and a just, loving, kind, and compassionate God. God will forgive us, he will renew and restore a right fellowship with him. And he will also help us not to sin again. He's given us an internal help, the Holy Spirit, which leads and guides and directs us if we submit to his will. If we obey and trust him, we will walk victorious and our lamp will not go out. The sixth prophecy was given to Ezekiel was in regards to Cog and Magog. These people were the descendants of Abraham. They were known for their great domestication. They were people of privilege. They had many horses, and they had the mastery of archery. So they were well known. However, they were a conquering people. That means they like to continue to enlarge their ter territory all the time. And um, they were coming for the Israelites. But along with that, they were not honoring God because they worshiped false gods and they had no respect for the things of God or his promises and the word that had gone forth in the land that God was going to restore the nation of Israel. For this reason, they had to be destroyed. Yeah. But God warned them before destruction came upon them, but they still didn't listen. Yes, How many times in our life, do we go through something and we receive a warning, but we don't listen, and we have to suffer the hard way? As believers, it's not necessary. We just have to humbly submit to God's will. In this passage, God continues to bestow 
his protection and mercy upon his children, even when our lamps are not lit. Fuel your fire, saints. Stay charged up on the word of God. The seventh vision that was given to Ezekiel was in regards to building the temple of worship as unto the Lord. This prophecy revealed to us how God kept his promises of mercy and protection upon the children of Israel. Had they been um, conquered by the Magog people, they would be unable to fulfill their promise of restoring the temple as unto the Lord. And they wanted to build a temple that was grand and glorious and worthy as unto our God, because they were truly grateful and appreciative for all that he had done for them. We as saints possess a temple within ourselves. The word of God tells us that our body is the temple. We are to present this temple to God without spot or blemish, so that God may find us holy and acceptable when we stand before him in the judgment. For the word of God also tells us that our body is a temple and we are supposed to hide God's word within our heart That's right. so that we might not sin against God. Little did I know when I was writing that Psalms 119 as a punishment, it was being hidden within my heart. Like a power pellet that I can always grab whenever I needed to use it. God does the same thing for us when we read and study his word. In Psalms 13, 17, the word of God tells us, there will I make a horn of David to bud. That means to grow and to blossom. I have ordained a lamp for my anointed. And we, the body of Christ, are God's anointed. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, called for a great time like this, to let our light shine, to minister and encourage to others for the glory of God. In 2 Samuel 22, verse 29, the word of the Lord says, For thou art my lamp, O Lord. The Lord will lighten my darkness. When we accept Christ into our hearts, we come out of the darkness and we come into the light and we walk in the newness of salvation so that we can be a ministering spirit upon this earth. Not to sit idle and just say, you know, well, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm going to go to heaven. God wants us to be busy about our father's work. He wants to use us to inspire and win souls for the kingdom of God. So we have to be busy. We have to stay in the game and not sit on the sidelines. In Proverbs, verse 13 and 9, the word of God tells us that the light of the righteous rejoice, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. That means those who do not walk in the light walk in darkness. And the word of God tells us that we may neither be hot or cold. We must either be hot or cold, not lukewarm, because if we're straddling the fence or in between, God will spew us out of his mouth. So we must stay the course and stay focused and humbly submit to the word of God and his will in our lives so that God can use us for his glory and that our lights will not be dimmed. If you're going camping, you want to make sure you have a lantern. Not accepting Christ into your heart and following his word is like going camping without a lantern or a match, something to have vision and sight. In the night. Yes. Saints, I admonish you today to continue to put on the whole armor of Christ and let your light shine before the world so that they can see the love of Christ in you and then be inspired to want to have a relationship with Christ. Now is not the time to sit and relax. Stay your course and humbly submit to the will of God so that you can hear his voice and do whatever he has called for you to do. We can't hear his voice if our lamp is out and our light is not shining bright. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. Thank God for the light. Walk in the light. Beautiful light. Amen. Praise God. We thank God because we know that, amen, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He came that we might amen, be able to know what the will of God is for us in Christ Jesus. And if you have never made a personal decision to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, 
now is the time. Now is the time for you to come out of darkness into the light. And that comes as a result of having faith in God's word. The word that says, believe on the name of the only begotten Son of God, and thou shalt be saved. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all needed Jesus to die for our sins, that we might, amen, have the forgiveness of our sins through his death and through his resurrection. We have the assurance that he is indeed, amen, the man and the one that God sent to pay the debt for sins, for he lives forever in the presence of God, eternal in the heavens, the God-man, the man, amen, who came from heaven. So we thank God. If you pray the prayer of faith and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the scripture said you shall be saved. I want you to know that, amen, God loves you, and that's the reason for this message. Pray with me. Father, I'm sorry for all my sins. Forgive me and save me that I might, amen, have peace with you and that all my sins are washed away and I have the hope of eternal life through your son, Jesus Christ. The scripture said if you pray that prayer and believe in your heart that you're changed. Simple as that. Everything you've ever done from the day you were born to this present time is forgiven. God is washing your sins away and making it so they'll never come against you again through the blood of Jesus Christ. And now you stand whole before God. Now you need to get into a Bible-believing church where you can learn and grow and find out just what has happened to you so that you can be able to stand on. Tell somebody else, I prayed and asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins. And that will just inspire your faith and make you stronger, amen, in your commitment to the Lord. For with the heart man believes unto salvation, with the mouth confession is made unto the soul, amen, is unto the Lord. God bless you. And don't forget, Jesus Christ is Lord. I could give.